I'm Dan Workman. This is my son Wyatt. And you're watching the, the Pedal, Pedal Plane Show. Welcome to the Pedal Plane Show. I'm Dan Workman. And I'm Wyatt. And we are back for Series 3. We've got more great interviews coming your way with pedal plane builders from all over the world. But first, we need to address the 747 in the room. We've got a brand new title. Why do we have a brand new title, Wyatt? We have a brand new name because this year we're focusing more about the pedal plane. That's right. We love making our annual trip to Oshkosh for Pedal Venture. And we love taking part in the pedal plane parade. And we want to do it for years to come. But last year... We had a lot of fun talking to our fellow builders and sharing their stories and their inspirations, why they build the pedal plane and watching their pedal planes come to life. And in series three, we have four great interviews that we can't wait to share with you. But it's not just about the interviews. What else is going to happen in each episode? In every episode, we're going to have Rob Peterson tell you how to get the best paint job done on your pedal plane. That's right. Rob's going to stop by every episode for a special technical segment. And this series, they're all focused on paint and finish. Now let's get started because we have got a lot of miles to cover. When we say we're going worldwide this year for the Pedal Plane Show, we're not kidding. We're talking to pedal plane builders in Brazil, the UK, and Australia. That's right. And you wouldn't think that a P-51 from Brazil, a Piper Cub from Australia, or a Peaton Pole from the United Kingdom would have much in common. But in fact, they share one very important thing in common. They all started life right here at Aviation Products. We're in Cedar Rapids, Iowa today. We're going to take you inside this shop right behind me and show you how pedal plane plans and pedal plane kits are made. So we're inside Aviation Products today. We're taking a look around the shop. You can see the CAD tables there over my shoulder. Uh, most of the kits are cut on the CAD table. Um, you can see the F4U Corsair sitting there. Uh, that's the second CAD table that they've just bought um, so that they can increase production and productivity. Um, over behind the Corsair, uh, they are making the first CNC cuts on the Corsair kit. So for those of you that have Corsair pre-orders, good news. Uh, that's the first cut today, testing the new program, seeing how it's going. Uh, Corsairs are getting closer and closer to shipping, and it's pretty exciting to be here on a day as they're making the very first Corsair cuts. One of my favorite parts about coming up to Aviation Products is uh, the pedal planes that hang on the wall. You can kind of see some of them uh, over my shoulder there. Uh, some of these are models that uh, aren't produced anymore, um, and usually they're the first of a model. They're the prototype or the first one that was built. Um, there's also some real interesting pieces of Aviation Products history, uh, like this Mustang uh, that's over my shoulder. Uh, that's actually signed by uh, Chuck Yeager and uh, Bud Anderson. And they originally thought, when they found the signature uh, one morning as they were cleaning them off up at Oshkosh, they thought someone had scribbled on it. And as soon as they saw it, they went right over and they put a piece of tape down. And then, you know, you see parts of the company's past. And then every now and then you get a, you get a look at something like this thing over my shoulder back here that you kind of get the impression that it's new. And, you know, that kind of looks like a crop duster. It kind of looks like a racing plane. And I just, I can't think of anything that looks like a crop duster and a racing plane. So from the moment your order comes in to Aviation Products, you are assigned a bucket. A kitty litter bucket, as a matter of fact. But in that bucket goes all the various parts that you need for your order. Gary and Jim start at the CNC tables over there. Then they come back over here to the storeroom after they cut your kit to get all the wood parts. Then they come over here and get the pre-manufactured parts, control linkages, landing gear wheels, that sort of thing. And then they bundle it all up over here together on the shipping table. As you can see, we've got some kits here that are going out to parts unknown. Uh, maybe your side of the world, maybe a little farther. And then from here, 
It's out the big roll up door. I'm Gary Sampson. Um, I currently own Aviation Products. Uh, we make pebble planes. A lot of the people that watch the show have heard us talk about how Mar Poppenworth designed the first pedal plane. Um, and you're now the owner of Aviation yeah. Products. Tell us a little bit about the bridge between the two. How did you meet okay. Marv, and how did you come to own Aviation Products? Well, Marvin worked for the same company that I work for, um, and I had met him um, out at the airport one day when he was working on working on an airplane. Uh, I made one. I, I picked up a set of plans at Oshkosh one year, and made a Christian Eagle for a charity here in town to raise money. Uh, for their camp for, for disabled kids. I built that and then through another acquaintance, I met Marv um, about the airplanes and he had mentioned that he was looking for somebody to take the company over and continue on because he's getting old enough that it was a little hard to, hard to, to do it all now. And I said, well, gosh, I'm looking at retirement here in a year or so. That looked pretty, pretty, pretty good. To work with it that October, uh, moved everything from his house to my house, operated out of the basement for a long, for, for several years. Um, we started with the hardware and the plans, just like Marvin did. Then I'd seen some CNC uh, equipment for um, advertising and, and uh, convinced myself that's the thing to do. So I sent the, bought one set it up in my garage that was that was quite a task that took you know, a couple of years to to scan all the drawings for everything and turn them into CAD data uh, we got we got a database and we started offering um, plywood we just kind of grown from there we continue to to add um, parts to our to what our what we were selling and so forth uh, real quick, um, do you have a favorite pedal plane? <laughs> <laughs> They're all my favorite. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a brand new Pedal Plane Show segment, Pedal Plane News. That's the part of the show where Wyatt will be taking a look at Pedal Plane News of the past, the present, and the future. So, for all the news that is the news, was the news, or ever will be the news, here's Wyatt! Dateline, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, Pedal Venture has been canceled. We reached out to a fellow builder to get his reaction. Yeah, I think it stinks. Canceled. In spite of Pedal Venture being canceled, the Pedal Venture organizers have announced the virtual Pedal Plane Parade. You can stop by the Pedal Plane group on Facebook to find out how you can send in your Pedal Plane clip to be part of one of the first ever virtual Pedal Plane Parades. See the link below for more details. De -de 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 -de. Now for Pedal Plane News of the Future. future, 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 future. Dateline, Wisconsin, 2025. The mad scientist of Pelplane, Gary Henson, has built the very first A-10 Thunderbolt 2 pedal plane with the actual Nerf Gatling gun. Pedal Plane News reached out to Mr. Henson and asked him, why would you build such a thing? Mr. Henson replied, why the heck not? And that's Pedal Plane News. Thanks everybody, you've been great, and I've been white. Now it's time for our technical segment, and our good friend Rob Peterson is taking his years of pedal plane experience to share some tips and tricks with you, our fellow builders, on how to get the best paint job for your pedal plane. Rob's built over a dozen pedal planes, and in fact, he's working on... Whoa, a dude! 
Dad, we should probably talk to Rob about that later. Good point. We'll let Rob tell you about his big project later. But in the meantime, Rob Peterson's here on the Pedal Plane Show to talk about paint and finish. So today is first in a series of four segments about painting your pedal plane. And today we're starting off with the different methods that are available to builders, some of the popular ones at least. And Rob has some of those methods uh, for us today. We get a lot of questions in the group, Rob. Uh, painting is probably either the first or second most frequently asked question about a pedal plane. And there's a lot of members that take it very seriously because you don't want a $25 paint job on your $500 pedal plane. And so when it comes to painting methods, tell us a little bit about the options and what you've seen uh, work and what you've seen not work. Well, um, there's really, I would say, four different methods um, that are typically used for painting the airplanes. Um, and we'll talk about a few examples of each one. Uh, but you can brush the paint on. Uh, rollers is a similar process to brushing. Uh, or aerosol cans. And then finally, airbrushing. Uh, the brushing method is probably the simplest, easiest, least complicated method. Um, and there's advantages and disadvantages to each of these four. Um, obviously, the brushing is the easiest one, but the disadvantages to that are the brush strokes that it leaves. It's not a real high quality, smooth finish. Um, and as an example for that, uh, I'm going to use some of my own um, projects from last winter. I refurbished four airplanes for a local EAA chapter, and they were pretty old, pretty rough, uh, and they'd been brush painted. I can't even guess how many times in the last 20, 25 years. So it really didn't make sense for me to spend the extra time and effort to, to put a really nice um, sprayed finish on it. So I just sanded them down as best I could and brushed them again. Uh, but otherwise, I wouldn't probably use that on any of my airplanes because I like something, you know, a more polished finish to it. But it's easy. Um, masking of it's pretty simple, uh, inexpensive to do that method. Um, a step up from that would be to use a roller brush on it. And I've not used that method myself before, but I know Chris Jewett did a GB uh, a couple of years ago. He posted several pictures of the painting process for that airplane. And I haven't seen it in person, but the photos of it look really impressive, you know, better than I thought you could get using a, a brush or, excuse me, full on finish for it. So I would consider that to be a really good viable method uh, if you're, you're skilled with that. And it doesn't take a high level of skill to do a brush paint job. Uh, that's the other thing that they're kind of ranked at here is in, in order of difficulty. The brushing, like I said, the easiest. Uh, a roller brush would probably be the next one. The third one is the one that I use the most is just simple uh, aerosol cans that you can get at a, a hardware store. Uh, there's usually a pretty good selection of paint colors for those. You can, for some extra money, uh, get custom colors made and then put into aerosol cans, which I've, I've done a time or two in the past. Uh, and the difficulty level of it is, is not really high, but it's higher than the brush or the roller. Uh, but it usually, if you do it right, it'll give you some really good results. I've been really happy with what I've done for that. Um, a good example that I like to use for that type of method is the Rare Bear that I did a few years ago. Um, it's a really complex paint scheme on it with the checkerboards and fades, several fades um, from lighter to darker colors and everything. But with a little bit of practice, it's pretty obtainable and, and gives you a really nice finish. And then the last one would be airbrushing. And to me, I've done some airbrushing in the past on, on in other areas, but not on pedal planes. Um, it's much more of an artistic uh, quality to it. Mike Badger, again, a few years ago, did a really fantastic P-51 with some great weathering detail and everything. And it, that's, to me, like the primo example of what you can do with a, some real artistic abilities and an airbrush if you know what you're doing. Um, so there's four different types of finishing methods. Brushing, rolling, aerosol cans, airbrushing, 
Um, in terms of difficulty, there's your, your pecking order. But also, in my opinion, that gives you the best results in those orders as well. Well, thanks for talking to us about painting methods today, Rob. We really appreciate it. And if any of the viewers have further questions, of course, you can uh, post them in the Pedal Plane group on Facebook or leave them in the comment section here on the Pedal Plane Show page. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of the Pedal Plane Show. It really, really means a lot. That's right. We had a lot of fun putting Series 3 together. We can't wait to share next episode with you when we're going to talk with Andre Fadrich from the United Kingdom. We'll be taking a look at Andre's original unofficial world record pedal plane event, which happened in 2017. And we'll also talk about the Pete and Pull pedal plane that almost made it for the very first pedal venture in 2018. Until next time, I'm Dan. Yeah, boy. And you've been watching The Pedal Plane Show. Show.